Блять, это что за Белка калитки. Наблюдаю в воздухе две ракеты. Блять, это что за Белка калитки. Наблюдаю в воздухе две ракеты. Блять, это что за Белка калитки. Наблюдаю в воздухе две ракеты. Since the first day of its full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Russia has relied on long-term missiles as one of its many military advantages. Ukraine has had almost no such weapons, but it seems that this may soon change, writes DW. The publication notes that the Allies have transferred a limited number of crews and ballistic missiles to Ukraine, but they have a short range and the partners also prohibit the use of these missiles on Russian territory. To change the situation, Ukraine is working on implementing its own missile program. On Independence Day, President Volodymyr Zelensky announced that Ukraine had successfully used a new weapon for the first time, the so-called Palyanitsya missile drone. The main targets of the Palyanitsya combat drones will likely be about 20 Russian military airfields from which Russia shells Ukraine. Some of them are located 600 to 700 kilometers from the Ukrainian border. Director of the Ukrainian analytical group Defense Express, Serhi Zaguretz, told DW that due to the lack of publicly available data, it is impossible to accurately assess the effectiveness of Palyanitsya. Zaguretz told DW that in recent years, Ukraine has achieved certain successes in its missile program. For example, the series of anti-tank weapons such as the Stugna and Corsa are now in mass production, or the R360 Neptune anti-ship missile. This product of the Kyiv Loop Design Bureau has been in service with the troops since 2020, as well as the RK360MS coastal missile system designed to detect and destroy enemy ships of various classes, he said. The Neptune missile has a 150 kilogram warhead and a range of up to 300 kilometers. On April the 13th, 2022, one of the most significant events of the Ukrainian-Russian war took place. Two Neptune missiles sank the Russian flagship Moskva. In 2023, it became known that Ukrainian developers had modified the Neptune sea-based missile into versions capable of hitting both ships and ground targets. According to media reports, last year Ukraine also deployed S-200 air defense missiles to strike deep into Russia. These missiles are now being modified to also be able to hit ground targets. The country also uses modernized Soviet Tu-141 Strids reconnaissance drones. These drones have a turbo engine and can reach speeds of about 1,000 km per hour. The missile in question is the Sapsan short-range missile, which has a fuselage diameter of 0.9 meters and a range of 500 kilometers. The missile is known under the export name Grom-2. It is noted that Ukraine has manufactured Grom-2 for Saudi Arabia with a diameter of 0.6 meters and a range of 280 kilometers. Since the beginning of the war, the development of the Sapsan has not been publicly commented on, although Russia has repeatedly stated that it shot down Ukrainian Grom-2 missiles. Russians were greatly impressed by the new drone attack on Moscow. According to incoming information, about 150 UAVs attacked Russian territory in September. Analyzing the nature of the destruction and the mass of the attack, Russian analyst and blogger Anatoly Nesmian notes the trend of Ukraine's superiority in the development of drones. He emphasizes that Russia needs to copy Ukraine's experience, but this is impossible due to the complete centralization of all processes in Russia. 
According to him, Ukrainians demonstrate the flexibility and mobility of their structures, which, being decentralized, are ahead of the sluggish machine of Russian bureaucracy. Nesmian emphasizes that Ukraine's raids are becoming more massive and destructive, and the UAVs themselves are becoming more technically advanced. At the same time, Ukraine uses many times more drones on the front, and we are already talking about four- and five-digit numbers. At the same time, Ukrainian production, modernization, and use of drones are decentralized. They are designed, assembled, brought to readiness in hundreds and possibly thousands of places. The Russian system is strictly centralized and therefore retains traditional inflexibility, rigidity, and incredible conservatism, so a balance has emerged. Russian drones are more powerful and cover the entire territory of Ukraine, but there are a lot of Ukrainian drones and they have the ability to dynamically increase their numbers. In fact, in just a year, isolated long-range raids have turned into massive ones. The next step, as one can assume, is the introduction of elements of artificial intelligence and the ability to use drones in a swarm. At the same time, the creation of a Russian air defense system capable of somehow limiting the activities of Ukrainian drones in the conditions of total centralization will lag behind Ukrainian capabilities by many steps each time. He emphasized, the Russian expert emphasizes that the solution for Russia lies in the same decentralization when private structures will be able to create drone hunters capable of intercepting attacking drones. But the desire of the Russian regime to control absolutely everything will nip such an idea in the bud. Therefore, for now, a few guards with machine guns are still enough, but after some time, the effectiveness of attacks will inevitably increase. It is not people who fight, and it is not weapons that fight. It is organizational structures that fight. And at this stage, the Russian organization maintains parity only due to its greater resources. But structurally, it is already losing to the more mobile and flexible organizational structures that Kiev demonstrates. The Russian expert emphasizes 